you, uh, Trembo, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, my, my chat with you this evening is fundamentally on the nature of change and embracing change, and how does one go about dealing with it. And so what I'm going to address is the nature of time and the revolutions of thought and where we are now in terms of having to <coughs> embrace the changes that are happening. About 10,000 years ago, civilization as we know it fundamentally began. And it began with one of the first revolutions of the mind, and that was the agricultural revolution. And during the agricultural revolution, which was nearly 10,000 years long itself, we fought primarily agriculturally. <clears throat> In the industrial revolution, we thought how? Thinking industrially. So we were thinking about the age in which we were. It all comes down to one very fundamental thing, which will have profound effect on the way we in the future. What is more important to manage than knowledge is that which manages knowledge, i.e. the manager of knowledge. <laughs> and what is the manager of knowledge? The brain. And the bankruptcies that you see cascading around the world at the moment are all based on one Prime bankruptcy. That is the bankruptcy of thought. That's why. So we are now entering into a new age. And that age is the age of intelligence. As of June this year, we are now officially in the age of intelligence, where we will think how intelligently <laughs> at last <laughs> because when you can think intelligently you can think intelligently about knowledge intelligently about information and technology intelligently about industry intelligently about agriculture and so on so the age of intelligence gives us a different shift a different perspective on all things. The, the basic philosophy behind that is that everybody is much more intelligent than we thought, which is nice to know, <laughs> especially coming into the age of intelligence. But the intelligence is, the multiple intelligences include, include your verbal and your numerical. Those are the traditional <laughs> intelligences. Added intelligence includes creative, your creative intelligence. And obviously the individual in the future is going to be an intelligence worker, no longer a laborer, no longer an information worker, which is what we are today. Bill Gates recently actually stated that the future, the future will be run, will be organized, will be determined by mind mappers and intelligence workers, intelligence agents he refers to them as, which brings us to universities and schools of management, etc. A few months ago, when the crisis was being really realized to have arrived. The Wall Street Journal, how many of you read the Wall Street Journal? Okay, then some of you may have picked up this editorial. Wonderful editorial. It said, we're in a crisis. Isn't that interesting? And the crisis is a business, a global business crisis. And it's being caused, obviously, by the people in business. 
So let's look, said the Wall Street Journal, at who is in business, but more importantly than that, who is running the business. And what do you think the kind of prime leader in the global business is? What? Thanks. An MBA, a Master of Business Administration. So the Wall Street Journal went back and looked at the global MBAs and looked at the education that they had been given. What do you think the main findings were in terms of what an MBA was taught? How to administer a Master of Business Administration. And what the Wall Street Journal concluded was that the degree needs to change. It has to incorporate thinking. It has to incorporate creativity. It has to incorporate social responsibility. It has to incorporate real long-term strategic thinking, etc. And I commend to you here, as I'm commending to every university and academic body, that we create new degrees which would be either and or master of business thinking. Now, if you think informationally and change is coming at you, what's going to happen? You're going to stand there rigidly with all your data and get blown away. But if you are thinking intelligently, as change comes at you, what will you do? Innovate. You will think your way out of, around, over, under, away, or through, whatever it is. So we're in this wonderful stage of evolution where suddenly we are beginning to think about thinking. It is called metacognition. And that's another degree that should be instituted, a degree in business metacognition, thinking about the thinking of thinking about business. I'm going to ask you to imagine that you're a computer, and you're a supreme computer. And I'm going to ask you to access a piece of data. And when you access it, this is the self-examination. The first check is, how long did it take me to access that piece of data? How long did it take? Next question is, what did my brain access? What actually did it access? And the third question is, were there any colors or associations radiating from whatever I accessed? Okay, group, are you ready to access? The piece of data I want you to access is Bill Clinton. <laughs> How long did it take you to access? Yeah. Now, what is amazing, and think about this in the context of intelligence, is that every group of every age, every educational level, every race, both sexes, every group around the world does exactly the same. How long did it take you to access randomly from an infinite database, just like that? And it's impossible. But you do it just like that. If you can explain how you did that, you will get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> and you will get it just like that. <laughs> So as Scientific American Mind was trumpeting on the front cover recently, everyone we have now discovered is fundamentally brilliant. And you just demonstrated it. I mean, that's astonishing. And you did it. 